it's coming all right. I feel like maybe a, a coach would help, but I just don't really know anybody that, you know, could do it. So I don't know. I'll figure it out. It's going to be rough. Like if anything has come clear in the last few weeks, it's going to be rough. I fully believe I'll finish and, and stuff like that. To be honest, I am actually terrified right now that it's three months away because I know how quick these three months are going to go by and we're going to be towing that line, getting ready to jump in that water before you know it. So um, these next three months, man, are going to be critical in staying on top of my training and pushing myself a little bit. Uh, starting to get excited, looking forward to it, looking forward to uh, being out on the course with uh, all the teammates. I actually feel pretty good. Uh, I started out not feeling great. Um, my plan wasn't really uh, going according to plan. I wasn't training anywhere near as much as I needed to. Bob kept uh, giving me crap about it the whole time. I see your, uh, your Strava. You can be doing a little better, my man, so I expect you to get out there and get some workouts in. And uh, I finally kind of got on the wagon. I've started uh, actually working out well. I feel better than I did, obviously, a few months ago. I finally learned how to swim. I'm more confident than I've ever been in the swim. Um, still have a lot of doubt. The bike is coming, the run is there. Sort of, there's a fire under my backside now because I know that it's getting close and I can't avoid riding the bicycle. Um, I have mixed feelings. I, I wish I had more time to train. Three months until we're there. That's uh, it's getting close. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I feel uh, pretty nervous about that when I think about it. I feel like my race, Coeur d'Alene, being three months away is exciting but like also very nerve-wracking. I feel like I'm getting ready. I'm not all the way ready. I'm definitely learning and absorbing a lot of information from a lot of the people that I work with and a lot of family and friends just like genuinely helping me. Um, so I'm learning a lot and I'm absorbing a lot more information, which I think is helping me feel like I'm getting very prepared for this race. It's starting to go a little bonkers here. Uh, it's going to be here before you know it. Um, I think overall training's been going uh, pretty well. Uh, I've been training uh, consistently, um, you know, really since my last full, which was my first finish. Uh, I finished Ironman Madison uh, September 22. Um, jumped right into an off-season training plan. Uh, it was real consistent, real disciplined. I, I felt really good. Um, up until a few weeks ago, a little bit of a setback. Uh, I, I just got this like nagging, sort of annoying hip pain. Uh, it's made running uh, a little difficult, but, you know, working through it uh, sort of par for the course with with Ironman training, um, you know, various aches and pains seem to pop up uh, kind of out of nowhere. And, um, you know, I don't have the luxury of being able to kind of take two to three weeks off and let it heal fully. I kind of adapted my training to rough. So a couple trail runs I've done have been way out of my league and, and just got too far out and, and made it really suck. And I think if I can make it suck, some of my training suck really hard, I think Coeur d'Alene will suck less. I have trained and completed 20 Ironman. So, you know, they're never in the bag and it's always an Ironman, regardless of whether it's an easy, easy race or if it's a difficult race like Coeur d'Alene. But, um, you know, it's just about putting the time in. It's a lot more time consuming. I knew that obviously you're training for an Ironman, that 17 hour cutoff is, that's a lot of hours, but I didn't realize how the before and after of like a three hour workout, I'm up at least two hours before eating and making sure I'm hydrated and setting up or like getting dressed. And then the two hours after I'm like stretching and rolling, eating, showering relaxing for a minute and I didn't realize how much time that takes up in my day and a lot of time the weekends. So that's something that I've had to learn, but I do have a really good support system that supports me the entire time. As of today, the longest I've ever run in my life is, is about eight miles. And that was uh, like in 2019 or so. 
Um, and yeah, I would like to see myself starting to push boundaries on running distance. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, I think I have a mental block on that one. <laughs> uh, I, I like to make myself excuses that, you know, I don't have that time available that today to go run for two, three hours. We all have excuses, right? You know, work, family, blah, 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 all that. But, uh, yeah, my training hasn't been going how I expected it to go. So like I always say, man, tomorrow's a new day. Hopefully um, I get on track and start pushing myself. My initial plan uh, was that I would be able to live my life and train. And no, I, I realize I can't do that. Um, I have to just train and train and train some more. I've been less lazy about it and, and I'm taking it more seriously and buckling down, which is awesome. But I've also, I mean, I've lost 26 pounds so far, so I feel pretty great. I feel very fit, especially now that I recently moved to Colorado. Um, I have been training at altitude, so that has been a completely different experience than training in Arizona where I used to live. Health has been great. I have had no injuries. Super amazed, surprised. Mentally, I'm feeling stronger than I ever have. Some days are harder than others, but I'm pushing through and I sometimes I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a training session. Um, it's a little frustrating when you're traveling because it's harder. You can always run, but finding swimming pools isn't always easy. Getting on a bike isn't easy, but uh, my nutrition's good. I feel strong. My legs have never felt stronger. I can't believe some of the things I'm doing, able to do. Well, some of these events are extremely physically demanding. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm good. And so I've noticed a change that I'm just healthier, just just stronger, healthier. I, I do feel good about my training because I feel healthy. Like that's that's a good thing. I feel healthy and I know what needs to get done. Uh, if you haven't done um, an Ironman swim, if you haven't done uh, a race period, 2.4 miles is a long way to go. So get in the water. Start getting some laps in. I've been trying to be in the pool three to four times a week. I've been pretty disciplined with it unless I'm traveling. I know some other people have it. Every time people ask me, how's the swim going? You know, I'm just, I kind of shrug it off. And every time I do, I, I get more and more worried that I'm uh, <laughs> going to eat my words on race day. I joined the swim camp. This is, this is it. Uh, faster. Freestyle with Carlin Pipes, and she's amazing. So, uh, you know, the question of have I started the swimming? Yes, I, I am swimming, but it turns out I'm swimming like I was swimming 5 oh, 50 years ago. I've only swam once so far, uh, but it was on pace, it was what I wanted. Swam 1,500 yards. I felt good about it and I feel like I could keep going. And uh, once it's warm enough that we can slip swim in the res, we'll probably pick up that swim pace a bit. I was hoping to start swimming April, March, the beginning of March, and now it's the beginning of April and I haven't started swimming, but I also am not super worried about it. I knew how to swim to save my life, but I didn't know how to competitively swim forward. So I have been slowly increasing my distance for swimming. Uh, since November. My sissy butt is not getting in the lake in the high 40s. So once that Sacramento heat hits and starts warming up those lakes to get close to 60, which is still cold, but it's manageable, I'll start getting in the lakes and getting some uh, open water swimming in. I know a lot of people don't like the swim, but I, I love the swim. So yeah, that's not a problem. You know, if anything has come to light about this journey to Coeur d'Alene is that this was a good idea. Like this was a good idea. Uh, you hear, you hear all this stuff. Oh, it's about the journey. And you're like, whatever, man, it's about the finish line. It really is about the journey. Like if it ended today, like through injury or something like that, um, I wouldn't have any regrets. I would be like, look what I can do. So yeah, I'm the journey. It's about the journey. And I'm, uh, if there's anything to add, it's that I'm glad I signed up for this. The amount of support we're getting from the actual Ironman staff and people has just been 
great. The more people that find out you're racing, the more advice you're getting, the more people are just happy for you. When you tell them you're scared, they say you can do it. They give you the inspiration. Um, the support is just great. The Ironman, ra the Ironman race is not necessarily about the race. It's about the entire experience. Um, you know, the volunteer program just opened and so I uh, was talking to some other teammates, my good friends Matt and Kurt and everybody and we were talking about, well hey, what, what volunteer position do you want to volunteer at before the race so that we can all just hang out and, and, and give back while we're also there. So it, it, it's about that experience as well. It's about hanging out before the race and, and sharing those experiences. It's not necessarily just about race day, so it's about, it's about the whole experience.